Four top 25 matchups this week four in college football. One Friday night, three on Saturday. I'm going to break down all the games for you, the four biggest matchups in college football, along with my proprietary 10,000 game simulation to let you know where the line value is and how to play these games and make some money this week. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And this is your weekly college football top 25 preview in which I take all the head-to-head ranked top 25 matchups and I break them down in deep, detailed analysis to let you know how to make some money, let you know where I lean in each game, and also where my 10,000-game database simulation projects the average margin of victory. One Friday night game, so let's do a quick hitter on this one. I know many of you are joining us early on Friday into Friday evening, so you still have time to make this play. If not, and you missed out, then you might want to consider clicking that bell when you subscribe because you get an instant alert when this video goes up each and every week, usually around Thursday night. Uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, Fox National TV, Friday night. We do have a top 25 matchup, barely a top 25 matchup. Number 24, Illinois, number 22, Nebraska. This is a winner stays, loser leave, top 25 town matchup. Whoever drops this game will be out of the rankings, and I think that most likely is Illinois. Uh, first of all, Nebraska currently about a 7.5 point favorite, and I do think there's some line value actually with the Huskers. As my database simulation, 10,000 games, uh, predicts an average win of by 12 points for Nebraska at home. Uh, they've actually my database is like the Cornhuskers this year. They projected a 12 point margin against Colorado a few weeks ago, and they were less than a touchdown home favorite. And they once again think this line is a little short. It actually opened nine. Early money came in on Illinois, down to seven and a half as I record this video on Thursday evening. Uh, but once again, I project a 12 point win. So I do think there's some line value with Nebraska, who remains at home after three straight wins and covers. Uh, Meanwhile, this is the first time this season that Illinois leaves home after three wins and covers. These two teams have combined 6-0 straight up in ATS this year, but all six games have been at home. I think that Nebraska home field will be the difference in this game on Friday night. Uh, Illinois' pass defense has been very strong this year, uh, but Nebraska has a pretty solid rush offense, which I think can keep the ball and control the line of scrimmage. Also want to point out the turnover difference. One of the reasons that Illinois is 3-0 straight up in ATS is because they've had a 9-1 to turnover edge, including forcing eight turnovers in those first two games, including that upset win at home against Kansas. They had a 4-1 turnover edge, but got outrushed 186-79 to in that Kansas quote-unquote upset win. Um, I think Illinois is the weaker team here, and we get some line value with Nebraska at minus 7.5 on Friday night. All right, let's look at your three Saturday games here. We'll start off with your daytime game at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. Number 11, USC at number 18, Michigan. Back in June, the Circa in Las Vegas put advance lines on many college football games throughout the year, bettable lines. And Michigan was projected, or actually a bettable line was not just projected, they were a nine-point favorite in June in this game against USC. Obviously, Michigan is down even more than many expected. They've had a rough start offensively, especially going into last week's game before they played Arkansas State. DraftKings had a look-ahead bettable line last Wednesday on this game, and it was USC minus two. And then right after the lackluster 10-point win by Michigan over Arkansas State as a 20-point favorite, uh, now the line is five, five and a half. So it's obviously a huge adjustment um, based on recent results. The question now becomes, is there value with Michigan? Let's look at my database simulation. 10,000 games simulated. I've got Michigan winning outright by three points on average. So the answer is yes, this line is too inflated. Also, I do a lot of consensus work. As you know, my NFL Fade the Public video will be up this weekend. But I also follow college football consensus, especially on big games. And this looks like one of the most public sides of the week. USC, one of the most public plays of the week. Yet another reason why this line is too high. So now the question becomes, can we trust Michigan, especially with that anemic offense? Well, I think maybe we could this week because there's a catalyst here, and that's the quarterback change. Uh, They're getting rid of Warren. They're bringing in... Orgy, who was actually projected to be the starter at the beginning of the season earlier this summer, but Warren's a better uh, a passer, and that's why they wanted him in the lineup for the first three weeks. But he's had six interceptions, has not gotten it done as a pocket passer. So now Michigan is going to more of a even more of a run-based offense. They basically have conceded that they are not able to pass the ball, and I think this run-based offense with Orgy, a very good running quarterback, could very well be the difference in this game and why we might start now to finally get some value with the defending national champs. Uh, Warren, six interceptions, just two touchdowns in the three games this year. Orgy, meanwhile, has appeared in all three games. He's only thrown six passes. He's completed three of them. Two of them have been touchdowns. But once again, he's not a passing quarterback. He's a run-based quarterback. And I think he will have success on the ground against a suspect USC defense. 
Now, both LSU and USC looked a lot better in that opener and defensively, but they were two of the worst defenses in the country last year, and I still think USC is not a great D. In fact, they gave up 304 passing yards to LSU. I know Michigan will look to run the ball more in this game, but I think they will have some success throwing. But what stood out to me in that LSU-USC game back on September 1st is the fact that the Trojans only had 69 rushing yards against a very mediocre LSU defense. LSU's improved this year, but they're still not a great D. So that 69 rushing yards definitely stood out to me. Uh, Michigan, a very good defensive team still. Um, They lost a lot of talent. 13 guys to the NFL, lost Harbaugh as well, their head coach. Um, But this is still a talented squad, and they did run for 301 yards last week against Arkansas State. So I look for a ground and pound. I think they actually have the edge on the line of scrimmage, the better rushing attack, the better defense as a home dog, and we get line value because the public is heavy on USC. Once again, I project an outright Michigan win with my simulation. Take a look at Michigan plus the uh, the five, five and a half points. You might get a six by kickoff Saturday afternoon with the public coming in more on USC. That's at 3.30 Eastern for you on CBS. Two more top 25 games for this Saturday, one in the late afternoon, one in the evening. I'm going to get to both of those for you in just a second. First, I want to let you know if you want my strongest official best bets for this Saturday, check out wagertalk.com, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Three and one, 75% last Saturday, and I like this card even better. Go get those right now, along with some special promo codes. I've got $50 off the rest of the baseball season, $100 off the rest of the football season, or $800 off a one-year all-access. I'll have more details here at the end of the video, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the details and the promo codes right below the daily free play. That's right, a free play every day on my page as well. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's look at the other two head-to-head top 25 matchups for this Saturday, week four, September the 21st. And we go to 4 o'clock Eastern on Fox National TV. Number 12, Utah at number 14, Oklahoma State Cowboys. Big 12 battle here. And I do think there's some value with Oklahoma State. And first of all, my database simulation projects the Cowboys winning outright by nearly five points. As I do this video on Thursday evening, Utah is currently only, or Oklahoma State rather is a two and a half point favorite. Utah is a two and a half point dog because it does look like Cam Rising, their star quarterback, will be back in the lineup after missing the last game and a half. Uh, backup was not that good. Four touchdowns, three interceptions. Rising, seven touchdowns, no interceptions in the first game and a half this year. So it is a big injury to keep an eye on. It does look like he'll be back, but I'm not sure he's going to be 100% healthy. And I think this situation favors Oklahoma State and we get some line value. You know, it's really interesting. These two quarterbacks combined have average age 49 years combined, two of the oldest in college football. I think it's rising seventh year in college football. It's just insane how that can happen. But both head coaches, Wendy Hammond, Utah, and Mike Gundy, I'm a man at Oklahoma State, 20 years each. 40 years combined at their respective schools. But Gundy has a really veteran squad coming in this year. In fact, if you look at the preseason returning efficiency numbers, both their offense and defense rank top 10. Only team in the country, I believe, to do so. Um, and they're off to a nice start here at 3-0 and straight up. And also a 2-1 and against the spread. Their only non-cover is an 8-point win against a decent Arkansas team. They didn't run the ball well in that game. In fact, they're not going to run the ball much at all this year. This is a pass-heavy offense. So then we look at the pass defensive stats for Utah. Um, Suspect last week against Utah State, after holding Southern Utah and Baylor in check, gave up 245 passing yards last week against um, Utah State. A little bit of a red flag for me. I do think Oklahoma State's going to be able to light it up through the air. And if Utah's Cam Rising does return, I'm not sure he's still 100% healthy. Um, This could be a good situational play for Oklahoma State. And we also get some line values. I project a five-point win for the Cowboys on Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern on Fox. All right, one game remaining. That's your 7.30 Eastern game Saturday night on national TV, ABC national TV. Number six, Tennessee against number 15, Oklahoma. You know, I talked about the USC-Michigan look-ahead line. Well, earlier this summer in June, um, the Circa had a look-ahead line, Oklahoma minus two. DraftKings a week ago had Tennessee minus two to minus three. The teams play last Saturday, and now it's seven, seven and a half. So huge adjustment. Um, Oklahoma was a 15-point favorite and won by 15 against Tulane, but what's really impressive was Tennessee. 71 nothing blowout of Kent State. Not a surprise. I had a best bet on Tennessee, minus the 49. You know, I love to lay big numbers in September for best bets. We had both Tennessee and Miami of Florida last Saturday in that role, and those two teams won by combined 133 to nothing, including the 71 nothing win. 
you know, I've been doing this now for 29 football seasons as a full-time professional handicapper. It might be another 29 years till I win two games on the same Saturday by a combined score of 133 to nothing. Because of that, though, Tennessee has become very public. Um, most offensive net yards ever in the first three games for an SEC team. Uh, just the rushing offense has been incredible. 304, 249, 456 last week in their first three games. Uh, they do have an aggressive defense as well. Jackson Arnold, though, mobile quarterback for Oklahoma. They're not throwing the ball well. This is so similar to that Michigan-USC game. You've got an Oklahoma team just like Michigan as a rare home dog that is struggling offensively but now is getting a ton of adjusted line value. So let's look at my database simulation. And just like the other game, I do predict Oklahoma to win outright by two. And that was exactly what the look-ahead line was this summer in June. And this is using a lot of this year's stats in the first three games. And yes, their passing offense has been suspect, but their defense has been very strong. And it's almost the opposite of what Oklahoma's had in years past. They've been all offense, no defense. This team's going to win with defense this year. And they've held their uh, first two opponents to 69 and 58 net yards rushing. Held Tulane last week, a decent Tulane team, though it's 106 yards rushing, only 173 yards passing. So I'm not sure anybody can hold Tennessee in check. But I do think Oklahoma's a good defensive dog in this game. Also a good rushing defensive dog with a mobile quarterback against that aggressive Tennessee D. And it's also Tennessee's first true road game of the season. I know they played NC State on a neutral in Charlotte, but this is their first true road game of the season. Keep in mind, Tennessee under Josh Heupel has been the best first-half team in college football, over 70% against the first-half number. It is minus four. So if you like Tennessee, maybe you take a shot with the first-half line, but you're still paying a premium. I have Oklahoma winning this game outright at seven, or especially plus seven and a half. I think the Sooners are a value play here on Saturday night. All right, those are your four head-to-head top 25 matchups for week four college football, a Friday night game, and then three Saturday games here on the 21st of September. Comment below. I read all the comments. Let me know your thoughts on these games. Where do you agree or disagree with my 10,000 game simulation? What other best bets are you looking at here for week four college football? Hey, include some analysis if you have time. Let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. I honestly believe we have the sharpest and smartest sports betting viewers right here on Wager Talk TV. Thumbs up, like the video if you're finding it useful. That's always appreciated. And once again, click subscribe and click the bell as well so you never miss when this video comes out each and every week. And also when my NFL Fade the Public video is live this weekend for NFL Week 3. By the way, Fade the Public, 8-4 and four so far the first two weeks, 67%. Let's see how it does in Week 3. Hey, by the way, speaking of 67%, I went 2-1 and one last Sunday in the NFL, but I went 75%, 3-1 last Saturday in college football. That's a combined 5-2 and two weekend, and I like this Saturday and Sunday's college and pro card even more. Go get my strongest best bets for this weekend right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And while you're there, consider one of those great promo codes that I'm going to mention and give you details on right now. I know we're talking football, but don't sleep on baseball, by the way. On a current 29-9 and baseball winning run, and that includes back-to-back extra inning losses. That's right, the last two games I've lost in extra innings, and we're still 29-9. and That tells you how strong the baseball season's been. Number one ranked overall in all of baseball profits this year at Wager Talk. Last two seasons, college and pro football sides combined number one ATS profit in football the last two seasons. Five and two last week, and we're off to a great start this year. NBA all-time profit leader. That starts in about a month. And college hoops has been number one as well. That starts in about a month and a half. So if you want the rest of baseball, $50 discount, MLB 50. If you want the rest of the college and pro football seasons combined, instant $100 discount this weekend with promo code FBALL100. Or if you want the All Sports All Access, 365 days and nights for just under three dollars, just over three dollars a day, just over a dollar a play. That's because you get an instant $800 discount with promo code SM365. You know, I forget to mention this a lot of times in the videos, but if you already have one of my other subscriptions, as I know many of you do, and you want to upgrade to say like the rest of football, or if you want to get that full one year All Access. Just let customer service know. Customer support is honestly the best and friendliest you'll find in this industry, in this business. And they will gladly give you credit for what you have remaining. You can still apply those promo codes and upgrade to a true, serious, consistent investment approach. Because that's what I want all of you to do. I want you to win with me. I know many of you tune in for football only. You've missed a current 29-9 baseball run and number one this year in all of baseball. Basketball starts in about a month. Get everything. Upgrade today. Once again, the rest of football, $100 discount, F-Ball 100, or the All Sports All Access, football, baseball, basketball, every day, every play for the next year for just over $3 a day, just over a dollar a play with instant $800 discount, SM365 is that promo code. Look, you don't have to memorize them. As I told you earlier, they're on my page right now 
along with all my best bets. And by the way, we have a one-day sampler for just $39. If you want to try all the best bets for Saturday or Sunday or any day, $39, $39 all day, one day, all access pass is a great way to try it out. But when you're ready to take a serious investment, be sure to use those promo codes because every dollar saved is a dollar earned added to your bankroll as you build that bankroll and continue to win long term. Once again, best bets, daily free play. I post a free play every day on my page. And also those special promo codes are right there as well. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on X and Instagram at Steve Merrill. You know the deal. Two R's, one L. Two R's, one L at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free sports betting content coming up next.